I uh, I'm really really honored and privileged to be part of this uh, this uh, presentation. This is not a message that we can make to their lives. Uh, the message today is very clear. The message is um, of hope, of hope that there are these very very complex patients that are out there that can be helped with the stuff that we do. And I want to emphasize that equity of access is one of the major points that everyone is able to access these complex um, procedures in our country, in our city. These were uh, procedures that were not available here for many, many years. You had to go outside the country to access these procedures. But now, it's on our doorstep. We've made it, the team here has made it available that everyone who has a problem, a complex problem, can actually get their treatment done in the city. So that's an important message today. Equity of access. The second message is affordability, the, the, whenever you start something that's very high end, there is a curve of affordability. There's one where you say, oh, this is going to be so expensive, there's no way I can afford this, to a curve that the team and the hospital system takes because of the experience of dealing with patients, going through these procedures, and driving efficiency in their processes to be able to bring down the costs of, of uh, these complex procedures. And the third main point is that this team that I've been very, very fortunate to be part of has grown organically. It's not something that we, we um, envisioned would happen so quickly. It has happened over the last five to eight years since I've been in India, and again, very privileged to be part of that team. Each one knows its role in the team, and we are a very cohesive group that is able to give the patients that need our support, our time, our energy, our enthusiasm, as well as our expertise under one roof. Under the MGM healthcare roof now, where the, the, the hospital system has really supported the team in every way to make things possible. So three things, as I said, equity of access to all patients that need treatment at their doorstep, that is in India. Second is the ability to have efficiency in the whole process, to drive down costs to make packages for the these treatments that were not, you know, they were, they were not mainstream. Liver transplant is mainstream. Kidney transplant is mainstream. But things that we're going to talk about, these cases that we've done, were not mainstream. We made them mainstream. And now the hospital systems are understanding what is the financial burden on the patient for these procedures. It's no longer exorbitant. You know, they, it is scaling down to a, a fixed. Um, fixed package that is now seeming more affordable than it was maybe 10 years ago. And lastly, that one team drives all the abdominal organ transplants. Not only focused on one type of transplant, it is multi-organ transplant team. So with that, in setting the tone there, I'm just going to you know, introduce our um, patients by focusing today on intestinal transplants, pediatric kidney transplants. When I say pediatric, that is, is children, but there are children transplants, kidney transplants being done. But what we're talking about is the very small child, kids that were less than 10 kilos when they were transplanted. There's not many centers in the world that will take these kids on. The, the status quo, even in big centers, except if you go to Great Ormond Street in, in the, or the Children's Hospital Toronto or Cincinnati, these are the hospitals that will take on small kids, 
um, very small kids, uh, less than 10 kilos, but not in India. I don't think so. It's, uh, Dr. Gordon, do you think anybody in India would take on these Kalai? So these are two um, pediatric nephrologists of our team and pediatric intensivists of our team. And very, very well experienced, trained abroad with us here. The answer is this will not happen. But now with this team, this is what we're looking forward to. To create a niche where kids can go through their schooling, can go through their lives, be growing up as, as normal as possible rather than being stuck to peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis. Their cognitive functions much better after transport. But the expertise is needed to be able to transplant them safely wasn't there. It is there now. So that is one of the things that I'd like to project. Uh, pediatric small kid transplantation. The last but not the least is, is a cure for diabetes. Diabetes being a silent killer, we all know about it. India is the diabetic capital of the world. Everyone talks about it. There are medical therapies for diabetes that are very, very good. But there are a select amount of patients that will not benefit from that medical therapy. And those are the patients that we are, we are looking at. How can we help these patients? And Pancreatic transplants, that means replacing a, a, a pancreas from the, a cadaveric donor to be able to cure diabetes has been around for a long time. The first one, in fact, was done in 1966. It's only now that if we, in India, are able to give that option to our select patients, and we're going to hear from, from those patients who've had this transplant to see what is the difference between a pre-transplant and post-transplant life. So this is the, the setting for this press conference. We to set out an awareness that the niche products are now available in India, in MGM healthcare, in a in a more affordable manner, and only one team that takes care of all of them. This is, this is the message for today. Having said that, I'm going to start with the um, thought process of when they you know, decided they want to do uh, to a transplant. And if you can come here to me, I'm going to introduce you to our pediatric nephrologist who had taken care of the baby. Blood sugars four or five times a day and take injections according to it. 
So over a period of time, the complications of diabetes started. So the diabetes started affecting my eyes and it started affecting my kidneys. So uh, before eight years, it started affected, affecting my kidneys. I had stage one kidney failure. Then over a period of time, uh, in the year of 2021, my kidneys completely failed and I was put on dialysis. So I used to take dialysis uh, two or three times in a week. So the uh, so the permanent solution for this is a transplant. So initially I was looking, we were looking for only kidney transplant. So I was meeting so many doctors and hospitals and getting their advice. So when I um, visited this transplant team, so the first thing they advised was uh, to not only get kidney transplant, but to also get pancreas transplant along with it. Because not only uh, solving the problem right now, also solving the uh, cause which caused my kidneys to fail. So uh, in the year of 2021, November, I had my simultaneous pancreas and kidney transplant together. And uh, after the surgery, now it's going to be almost two years. Uh, throughout these two years, my blood sugars are completely normal and I'm not taking any insulin injections or any medications to control my blood sugars. Uh, my sugars are completely normal and I am not on any diet restriction and my kidney has also started functioning normally so my creatinine is under control, under normal levels and I am not on any dialysis so uh, this is my experience with uh, pancreas and kidney transplant. Hello, Namaste. I am Yadav, Rajasthan, Herod. I am from Herod. I am from Herod. So when we get the pancreas offer, so we'll accept the offer. And then we'll plan the logistic that can be in the midnight. Usually I like to transplant the morning. So we'll plan the logistic that can be in the midnight. Usually I like to transplant the morning. So we'll plan the logistic that can be in the midnight. We cannot find the time. So we'll make sure the donor time is in the midnight. Tell them priorly at least six to eight hours if they are outside. Because our own patient could have been there, they have their own work business. So we will make sure and like fully arrange money. So the coordination needs a lot of manpower. My cadaver organs may have a lot of manpower. So on the money fund. Because the main problem is the kidney pancreas and the patient allocation level is still we have a lot of. I think so we have modified rules. So in Mari Vandhi donor, Vandhi kidney donor family lay in the Amna, we register them only for the cadaver pancreas alone. The majority of pancreas go unused everywhere in India. So on the Mari. So that's a very important fact again, that the pancreases are there, but they go unused. So there is an a, there is an underutilization of a very important resource. Unless the awareness gets to the uh, to the public that there is a possibility of having a dual transplant back to the kidney. On that note, I'm going to hand the mic to the mom. And I was a diabetic for 18 years, for type 1 diabetes, and taking insulin three times a day. So with diabetes, there were obviously complications. I used to wake up in the middle of the night with sugar high or low, and obviously. I we started to affect my organ and when I wasn't hospitalized because of the complication of diabetes. And there were more things and there were other things which followed because of diabetes. Hello? Yes. So this year I was diagnosed with CKD with chronic kidney disease. I called all over India, I called all the hospitals in India inquiring about the possibility of a synchronous kidney and pancreas transplant. So, after calling all the hospitals, 
I finally set out for Chennai with nothing but faith. And it was here after coming to MGM and talking to the doctors that my faith was converted into a belief that I could also be treated and lead a normal life. So, in no time, I received a call from the hospital that there was a donor available and I was and I, and I underwent a transplant over here. It was very smooth. The doctors, they were very supporting, comforting and the staff was also very congenial. So it was, a, it was overall a very good experience and yes, now I feel good that I wouldn't have to take those insulin injections and I would be able to lead a normal life, normal and a healthy life.